Hey guys, it's Coop from Garage and Reviews, and today I'm reviewing the Major Ludi Power Rack, largely because you guys keep requesting it. This is probably one of the most requested products that we've had this year, and I'm going to review it. This is an all-in-one rack designed to be a power rack with a built-in functional trainer. I've had many people ask me about it, and so today I'm gonna tell you what I think about it in a continuation of our budget power rack series. Let's get into it. So more and more companies have started to add things to power racks. In the past, power racks were power racks. You use them for squat, deadlift, bench. They were made for those types of lifts. Now companies are adding cable systems for lat pull downs, low rows, and functional trainers as well. Started at the top with the very expensive racks and has trickled down to prices that many people can afford. Okay, so I'm gonna review this in two separate sections. One is gonna be the power rack and then the other is gonna be the functional trainer. And then I'm also gonna compare this to the many options that are out there. We have reviewed many racks already that are comparable to this. I'm thinking of the Rep PR1100 with the lat pull down low row function. I'm thinking of on the higher end, also the Rep Aries and Athena, but also comparable directly with it is like the Fitness Reality A10 XLT with their lat pull down as well as their functional trainer. Also the Force USA My Rack or even the RIT Fit rack, which I think is the most comparable. So at the end of this, I'm gonna compare all of those. So stick around if you'd like to see that. Now, also, Major Ludi sent this so we could do a review. If you'd like to purchase it, check it out at the link in the bio. They'll pay us a small commission. Thank you. Okay, so let's start off with the base power rack. This is essentially a two by three rack. Now, they're importing this, so they actually don't use the language two by three, but the uprights on this are 50 millimeter by 70 millimeter, which is closest to what we know as a two by three upright. Now, one thing that they're doing with this, I notice this, is rather than facing the two by three forward, so the thin side is facing you when you're looking at the rack, it's faced to the side. Now, how that affects structurally, I don't necessarily know. I'm sure there's a reason that companies in the past have done that orientation, but I will say <laughs> the two by three, when you face the three inch side forward, it looks like a big, beefy, expensive rack, which would be my guess why they chose to do this. You'll find actually with a lot of major Ludi stuff, this is an honest review, just so you know, so I'm gonna go hard sometimes. They're a marketing company. They're marketing this thing hard. If you read some of the language on their website, they like, they're either using chat GPT or they have a copywriter that really knows what he's doing and he's pulling out every every possible detail on the product. They're also using renderings on their site. I just wanna make this clear. I freaking hate renderings for product photos, not because they don't look good, but because when you get them in house, it sometimes looks like what you see on Pinterest and then you make the little bake good in the, the you know, your easy bake oven and it comes out. It's like, man, that did not look like what it looked like on Pinterest. Sometimes that happens. But if you're worried about that, I will say their renderings and their actual in use product, they're not that far off. Okay, so the uprights, two by three, but they're using not 11 gauge steel, which is most often seen, which kind of makes sense because of the price range of this product. They're using two millimeter thick steel within their marking copy. What that is, is that's 14 gauge steel. So they're using 14 gauge steel, which is the same as what most products within this price spec are using. So same thing as Rep PR 1100 and PR 1000, also the Rip Fit Rack, as well as the Fitness Reality Rack. So very similar uprights that's being used. The big difference is rather than being two by two, this is actually two by three. The good thing about that is really it just looks beefier. Um, it may be stronger. It is more steel, so the prices may be a little bit higher than other comparables that are at two by two. But you're not gonna have really any attachments that you can add to this from other companies. The reason being is they're using some unique hole sizing and also because of the orientation of the upright. So if you're thinking like, oh, I'm gonna buy this because it's two by three and I can use the Rogue Infinity line attachments, that's not really the case. With that said, most people are used to the 11 gauge steel. This being 14 gauge steel, I would not worry about the capacity of this rack. They listed all the capacities on their site, but basically at the J hooks, which is the weight that most matters, it's got a thousand pound capacity, which I always find funny when they say thousand pound capacity. It's like they didn't test it any higher than that. It literally, all these racks came back as exactly 1000.000 pounds. Well, this one did too. So this has a thousand pound capacity. Honestly, if you're lifting that much, I wouldn't suggest buying a rack like this. That said, it's gonna be able to hold as much weight as you ever want it to. 
Okay, one note on assembly, because many of these less expensive products are kind of like Ikea products where you have to fully assemble everything. This one is one of those. Came in three separate boxes. Between Sam and his wife, Sambaline, it took them three hours of assembly time. So you can basically, they, they assemble a lot of things, but three hours all in on this rack. Honestly, there's a lot of different parts, but it's a pretty quick and easy assembly, all things considered. Now, one of the most notable parts of this, and one thing I wanna pull out from the beginning, especially when you compare it to other comparable racks, like the RitFit rack, is I think this is actually a better designed rack than those. This one is a little bit more expensive than the RitFit and Fitness Reality rack, but I think it's better designed, and this is why. If you notice on the RitFit rack, they put the cable system right alongside the back uprights, which means you can't use it as a power rack. You have to use it as a half rack. Because this one is offset, they put the cable system farther back so the guide rods aren't in your face. You can actually use this like a power rack. So you can use the safety bars that come with it to actually use for safety. You can squat inside the rack without having to worry about the cable system being in your way. That seems like a minor thing, but is a huge benefit. And like on the higher end is a reason that the offset base from Rep Fitness used on their low row and lat pull down is a better design than say Titan on their Titan series that runs right along the uprights. It basically prevents you from using it. So for a more budget friendly rack, that was actually a really good design decision and allows you to actually use the rack as a power rack. Now, a measurement that many people like to hear when they're buying a rack is the outside to outside width. So this is right around 48 inches. The reason that's a good number, it's in between 49, which is on the higher end, 47 is on the thinner end. Things, companies like Rep Fitness and Sorenex have that. That's nice, 48's good. I would prefer 47, but it's not a deal breaker by any means. But when you're unracking and re-racking your bar, you want a thinner width so that the collars on your barbell aren't hitting it. That said, if it's too thin, then you're gonna basically have your hands running up against the J cups when you're taking the bar off. So I think this is actually a good width. The height is 84.3 inches tall. Basically, it's designed to be used in any environment. It's gonna work in your basement as well as your garage gym, pretty much if you have low ceilings or high ceilings. Then a couple other things on the power rack specifically, the J cups are plastic lined and they can hold what they say, a thousand pounds. Comes with dip bars as well, as you can see, they're actually upright on upright. They have two different handle widths and they feel okay. They have rubber on the handles. They're just a little bit thin, but the width is actually okay. And then the pull-up bar. The pull-up bar is a multi-grip bar, but it is an angled pull-up bar and then has multiple neutral grips in the middle that you can use for changing your grip. I will say they added basically the these like nice primo looking handles on the ends, they suck. <laughs> the reason they suck is because they twist. So higher end racks will often use those. And again, it makes the rack look premium, but in use they spin. So it's very uncomfortable. They don't take chalk well. So honestly, when I use this, I'll probably just take those off, but just so you're aware they're on there. Okay, now to the functional trainer component. Talked about the rack, it's pretty standard in terms of the rack construction versus price comparables. But to the functional trainer, this is like the product of the year. So many companies are coming out with all-in-one systems and the reason is because people really like them. Home gyms are small spaces and having dedicated separate functional trainers and racks can be very expensive. So combining them into one is a great idea. It's one reason that the Aries and Athena are so popular and many other companies are coming out with racks that are like this. But I love it that there's now budget options for this type of product because a lot of people find them useful. There's multiple ways that this is happening. You can have the lat pull down and low row functionality, or most often you can also have the functional trainer. Major Ludi went with the functional trainer option, but allowed a foot plate on one of the uprights included so that you can also use it for low rows. Now this is a plate loaded system. It's not a weight stack. The max capacity on it that the cables can handle is about 350 pounds, which should be enough for pretty much everybody that's out there. But it's on a two to one ratio at the handle. So the carriage itself is about eight pounds, which means at the handle on each side is four pounds. If you combine them, it's eight pounds. That's how two to one works but it's a standard carriage. It's using guide rods with plastic bushings, so it's gonna be smoother than like a square tube, say Titan is using on their wall mount functional trainer that is really on the budget end. This is a, like an in-between option of the really high end options and the really low end options. So there are a lot of pulleys on this. It routes all through the system. They're plastic pulleys. 
not as nice as aluminum pulleys, obviously, but if you used aluminum pulleys on this, the price would just skyrocket. So I'm fine with the use of this, and for home gyms, it's smooth enough, in use, and will also last long enough for most people. On the front, it's using swivel pulleys that swivel about 180 degrees, so you can use it off to the side of the rack. One thing of note, when you're adjusting this up and down, one thing that we found is if you don't have the knob fully tightened in, it can pop when using it off of the hole increment. So just make sure that when you're using it, you lock it in on the side. That way you're not having it go up and down when you're using it. Now, another thing that just on the swivel pulley, this is the same thing we saw with the RitFit rack, which is a similar swivel. One thing that's annoying is on the front of this, they're using the ball stop, which is nice, but the front pulley sticks out. So every time you do a movement that's angled down, the ball basically rubs along the carriage and it's just like this ugly noise. It doesn't sound good, doesn't feel good. It's not a huge deal, but just something I wanted to note as it will cause wear and tear. Okay, now to the value. How does this compare to other companies? So this option right here, not including the bench, they have packages where you can buy pretty much everything. Also, I don't know if you can see this, but the bench, somehow they shifted the lettering off to the side and at an angle. I thought maybe that was cool. You know, maybe that they did that on purpose, but they didn't, I don't think so. So um, just be aware, there may be some problems with some of that stuff when you order it. But I'm reviewing specifically the rack. It does, as you can see, one thing I wanted to comment on, it does have an Arch logo, but it's an aesthetic Arch logo. Arch logos are not just there for looks, they're there for stability too, because they have a longer gusset on the side, so they add more side to side stability. This one does not. It's just made for looks. Okay, the price for this option is $820 with free shipping. That includes the rack that you see, the dip handles, the safety bars, the J-cups, the landmine, the foot plate, as well as the carriage system, and basically everything that you see there, okay? So when you're looking at that price, you're like, ah, oh, that's okay, and then we start to compare it to others. So here's some others that you should be looking at. One is the Rep PR 1100 or 1000 with the lap pull down low row option. Personally, I use a lat pull down or low row more often than I use a functional trainer. So because of that, I would prefer a center mount lat pull down and low row. That said, there are many of you that could use due to how weak you are, you could, uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but you could use this as a lat pull down and a low row as well. It's just not gonna be a fully vertical pull, which I prefer. But when you look at the prices on those, the Rep PR 1000 with shipping is about 650 bucks for that combined unit. This one's 820. A couple other comparables that are all in the, that price range and maybe a little bit cheaper, Fitness Reality A10 XLT with the lat pull down low row attachment, actually right around 550. You have the Hulk Fit Pro Series option that's very similar, but a little bit cheaper than that. And then the one that I think is most comparable and one that we've reviewed is the Rit Fit PPC3 with the cable crossover, incredible names. But that one is 660 bucks. So you're looking at a pretty vast price difference between the two and you're like, why would I get one or the other? Because to be honest, they feel very similar in quality and use. Here's why I do think it's worth spending extra for the Major Ludi. Like, just being honest, I do think, although like there's some things I don't like about this that I've commented on, for the price, I think this one is actually a better option, and the reason being is you can actually use it as a power rack. That's the biggest reason. If you don't care about the power rack function, honestly, the RIT fit and this one in use feel very similar. This does have two by three uprights, but it's not like it's offering you extra capacity or extra functionality, really. That RIT fit rack can hold the same amount of weight, but the reason I like this one, and I think it'd be spending more than the RIT fit for this one, would be they actually offset the back carriage so you can actually squat and get under the bar when you're using it on the back uprights. And if I'm buying a power rack, it's taking up power rack space. I wanna be able to use a power rack, and it's safer. So, all that said, if I'm looking at these options, which one am I gonna go with? If I'm on the cheap end, for me personally, I'd probably go with the Rep PR 1000 or 1100 because it's a higher quality rack and it's from a company that's probably gonna service their warranty better and be around. But if I'm comparing something and want the functional trainer for sure on this one versus the Rip Fit, I'd spend a little bit more and go with this one. Now, I know a ton of you are looking to get something like this for your garage gym or home gym. Is there another rack out there that you'd like to see us review that's on the more budget end of things? Let us know in the comments. I do also wanna say this, kind of funny. We're calling this a budget rack at 800 bucks. I may just be an old guy or something, but like 10 years ago, 800 bucks could have gotten you just an incredible rack. Not saying this isn't good, but 
like you could get made in the USA, like 11 gauge steel, heavy duty stuff for that price. So maybe I'm aging myself, but man, prices are getting expensive. But when you look at the comparables, 800 bucks, honestly, it's not crazy expensive versus what else is out there. So let me know anything else you'd wanna see this compared to or other racks. Let me know in the comments. This has been Coop from Garage and Reviews. I'll see you next time. Peace.